This is Antipholus of Ephesus. His twin brother is Antipholus of Syracuse, and they both have twin servants, Dromeo of Ephesus and Dromeo of Syracuse. <laughs> So Aegeon's wife gives birth to twin sons, um, which happen to be Antipholus of Ephesus and Antipholus of Syracuse later on. Um, and then at the same time of their birth, there was uh, the Dromeo brothers, who are also twins, that were born um, by uh, a poor woman. And because they were poor, they went and lived with Aegeon and his family. They are shipwrecked from a storm, and the ship basically breaks apart, leaving the mother, Antiphilus, and Dromeo on one side, sailing off toward the, towards the Avidarian <laughs> ship, and basically sail off, whereas the father, on the other half of the ship, go and get saved by the Corinthian um, ship, and with Antiphilus and Dromeo. Where they arrive, um, they don't realize that all of the family is in the same city. So there's a lot of confusion, and Dromeo of Ephesus runs into Antiphilus of Syracuse thinking that he is actually Antiphilus of Ephesus, his own master. Um, and he comes to inform him that Adriana, his wife, um, is waiting for him at home for dinner. And they both get into a pretty big argument and Antiphilus of Syracuse ends up hitting Dromeo of Ephesus who's also very confused at this point. Um, and he takes off to Adriana, Adriana and Luciana's home. So Adriana hears this from Dromeo of Ephesus and she is afraid that her husband Antiphilus of Ephesus, not Antiphilus of Syracuse, is having an affair. Act 2. So Adriana and her sister Luciana end up seeing Antiphilus of Syracuse on the street and they accuse him of having an affair. Fair. Now he has no idea what's going on because he is not her husband um, who is Antiphilus of Ephesus. So he wants to know what's going on and basically follows them back home. In Act 3, Luciana, who is Adriana's sister, rebukes Antiphilus for not being faithful to her sister Adriana. And what happens is that Antiphilus of Syracuse ends up falling in love with Luciana at this point. Antiphilus of Ephesus orders a necklace to give to his wife, Adriana, from Angela. And once the necklace is ready, Angela goes to deliver it to him, but instead finds Antif Antiphilus of Syracuse and accidentally gives it to him instead. So when Angela goes and finds Antiphilus of Ephesus to um, receive payment for the necklace, Antiphilus, Antiphilus of Ephesus gets upset because he never actually got the necklace. So Angela gets, up, Angela gets upset and throws Antiphilus of Ephesus into jail. So Antiphilus of Ephesus is stuck in prison and demands his servant's twin brother, Dromeo of Syracuse, to go to Adriana to get his bail money. So Adriana consents to give him the money and Dromeo of Syracuse goes back to prison to find Antiphilus of Ephesus um, to bail him out. But in fact, he runs into Antipolis of Syracuse. And while they're talking, the courtesan comes along and demands that Antipolis return her ring back, which in fact, Antipolis of Ephesus had. Act 4. Now all the women are pretty convinced that Antipolis of Ephesus and his, and his servant are crazy. And so they go and get the exorcist and the doctor to come with them. <laughs> Adriana goes to the Duke for help, and at this point, the Duke is leading Adrian to his execution. In order for the Duke to help her, he calls in the abbess to help him and clarify some things. The abbess clarifies to the Duke that Adrian is actually her husband from, that she lost from a shipwreck long ago. She also clarifies that Antiphilus of Syracuse and Antiphilus of Ephesus are actually their sons. And it's a happy ending to the story, with the story ending with the Antiphilus brothers, hand in hand, not one before another. The end. Good job!